a word in the King James uh, that I want to just teach, preach today. Uh, that word I said is found in 2 Peter uh, chapter 2, verse 9. Amen. Chapter 2, verse 9. Very quickly, as our time is fleeting. In the King James, it thus reads, verse 9 says, The Lord knoweth how to deliver the godly out of temptation and to reserve the unjust unto the day of judgment to be punished. I want to teach preach this morning a theorem or an idea that he knows how to deliver. The Lord knoweth how to deliver the godly out of temptation. Let's bow. God, we come now thanking you for who you are, what you are. We thank you for your awesomeness, God, that we can believe, amen, because we recognize that you are a deliverer, God. You deliver on your promise. You deliver on your word. You deliver on whatever you say. Your word is good, amen. And history bears out that whatsoever you say, amen, happens when you look, Father God, the wind, Lord, your way, uh, Father God, is brought out in history that you are a deliverer. Bless us, Father God. Remove uh, me from uh, myself that this shell may be filled with your Holy Spirit. Let your angels, let your spirit fill the temple, God, that no room for nothing else but you and praise to you. And Lord, we'll be so careful to give you the praise, glory, and honor. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. I want to talk about how God delivers. Amen. How he brings about, how he does what he does. Um, uh, and when, I, when we were younger, probably in our high school years, um, I had a very, very dear friend of mine by the name of Kenneth Taylor. Uh, Kenneth Taylor was, a, you know, I was a small, scrawny guy, uh, probably weighed about 100, a buck and 25 on an easy day. Uh, carrying about a hundred pound weight. Uh, so I was a little skinny guy and wondering how Kenny and I met. Uh, Kenny was in the hall doing something else and I was happy to be in the same hall and some guys were trying to jump me. Uh, you, know, I, you know, back then I had a big mouth even though I didn't have big muscles. I had a heart but even though I didn't have a whole lot of strength. And the guys was roughing me up pretty good. They was, man, they was trying to stuff me into a locker. And the interesting thing is, they almost got me into the locker, but then all of a sudden, one by one, I started seeing them disappear. And so when I picked out the locker, I saw this great big, look like a guard or a tackle, standing there, grinning at me, with his hand out. It was Kenny Taylor. Yeah, and I said, ah. so I said, hi, he said, hey man, how you doing? Uh, my name's Kenny. You know, he sang in the gospel choir. Uh, you know, he, he started coming to our church uh, to sing in the choir. And the thing about it is, as big as he was, he had the voice of a Luther Vandross. Anybody knew Kenny? No, Kenny really could sing. But I met him during a rough situation in my life where I really thought that they were getting ready to do something to me. And it's interesting, uh, as my our friendship grew with Kenny, Kenny always became our ace in the hole. He was our, our, our deliverer. Kenny, you know, you couldn't pick on me. You couldn't pick on us. Not with Kenny around, because if Kenny finds out, he was going to come and defend us. You, 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 are, you see, it's funny. Uh, but without Kenny, I, I, was, I was tough uh, with my mouth. But with Kenny, I was tough with my fist. Have you, have you ever been in a situation uh, where you are, you are in, in over your head and you really don't know how this thing is going to turn out and all of a sudden the cavalry shows up and, and, you, and it gives you a different sense and a different feeling when you recognize that your help is but a few steps away. Have I got a witness? Come on, it's like having, he was like having a genie in a bottle with Kenny. I can pick a fight with anybody. And then had Kenny take care of my life. I was tough around the school. I had a different swag. I had a different uh, 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 you know, thing about me because I knew uh, that just down the hall or in the other hallway, 
Kenny was over there uh, with some, some young lady probably, and all I had to do was go, Kenny! He stopped what he was doing, come around, and handle things for us. Come on, if you can't understand that, all of us grew up with parents with S's and capes on. For those of you who uh, were fortunate to have your father living in the house, you understand this uh, better than uh, uh, most people when it comes to God because we have parents uh, who we, like I said, had an S on their chest. I would hear guys uh, talk about their father as the EST of the world. They were the toughest, they were the strongest, they were the, the fastest, they were the hardest. Uh, everything about them was great. They were the meanest. They could shoot the furthest. They could run the furthest. They could swim the furthest. They were the EST of our world, uh, my brothers and sisters. Why? Because they were our deliverers. We created supermen and women in our efforts to visualize a deliverer or somebody who could bring us out of anything. Come on. We, 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 we would sit man and talk about fathers. In fact, one of my friends, you know, I would tell a story and he would have a story to tell on top of my story that made his story greater than my story. Uh, Steph would, would, you know, in fact, they used to say that I would tell a lot and then Steph would tell a lot on top of my lie that made it greater than the lie I told. You, you know the story of how a fish go. You know, I went and I caught a fish that was this big and the next guy's fish is this big and the next guy, and if the story keep going, by the time it gets around pretty good, I caught a whale and he caught two whales. When really we only count minimum. That's what I'm talking about when it comes to stuff like that. A deliverer, uh, my brothers and sisters, ought to be delivered of uh, defined by Webster is to do what you say you will do or what people expect you to do to produce a promise or a wanted or an expected result. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Hold on. It, it, to deliver or to be a deliverer, you gotta always uh, uh, you ought to always bring the goods. You gotta always do what is expected of you. My expectation was every time I got in a tough situation that required my fist, that I had somebody who was able to overcome whatever was going on. And, and I've seen him fight two or three people. Uh, and when he get tired, he had another partner of his that came in and took over the rest of the fight. A deliverer is somebody that you can count on amen, to do what they say they're going to do when they say they're going to do it, but not necessarily in the time you say they're going to do it and how they're going to do it. We have a problem. Uh, we want uh, things done according to the way we want them done. But when you got a deliverer, you got to let them do it, amen, the way that they uh, can do it. Have I got a witness? The deliverer, my brothers and sisters, saved or uh, they rescue or they set something or someone free from something. A deliverer, my brothers and sisters, defined by the Bible starts out in Matthew chapter 6, verse 13, when it says in that model prayer, it says, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. In other words, we want God to set us free from evil. We want God to rescue us from free. We want God to save us from our trials and tribulations. It says, but deliver us uh, from evil uh, to set free and to lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one and the power and the penalty of evil uh, to take and hand over or to leave uh, for anyone to convey, deliver a package, to hand over, to surrender, to deliver the prisoner to the sheriff, deliver themselves over to God. First John 4 and 4 says, Ye are of God and the children, and have overcome them, because greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. And Psalms 34 and 4 says, I sought the Lord. Amen. And he delivered me from all of my fears. This background of this text, and I'll be out your way. Uh, the background, uh, Peter uh, is talking to them about what he's seen, what he witnessed, and what he experienced. Our testimony, my brothers and sisters, is our bestseller, as we talked about in Sunday school, for who God is and for what God can do. And it's our testimony that says that God is the EST, amen, of this world. He's the strongest, and he's 
the most powerful, he's the toughest, and he's the roughest. He's the one who can sail the seven seas. He can calm winds. He can stop in the middle of a storm. Our God is able to do all things but fail. Our testimony says that he can go down uh, into the gutter and bring up and then the trash and make it into something. Our God is able uh, to give us, to feed us when we're hungry and to comfort us when we're lonely. Have I got a witness? Our testimony, my brothers and sisters, it is in it, 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 it we witness the power and the presence of Almighty God. It is because of it that we have a blessed, uh, infallible truth because it happened to us. I had a guy on my job kept trying to tell me that God did not heal me. And the son, he didn't know, he couldn't explain it. I said, listen, I said, I was there, but I can't explain what he done. I don't know if he blew uh, the wind on me. I don't know if he's looking um, as he did in Exodus. I don't even know if he closed the mouth of the enemy. All I can tell you is that something happened to me and I haven't been the same since then. Have I got a witness? So those, amen, when you tell your story of how God brought you uh, over and how he brought you out of your this and your that people, amen, ought to be able to resonate uh, with that. With which uh, we have seen, uh, he says in 1 John, that from that which was from the beginning, which was heard, which we have seen with our eyes, which we have looked upon, and our hands have handled of the word of life. He's telling uh, them that look here, we've experienced God for ourselves and our testimony comes out of what God does or uh, have done for us. But here, Peter is talking to them about the things of God and the word of God because there were some false witnesses and some false teachers and some false prophets that comes up in the seed of this thing and, it, and, and people uh, began to listen to them and began to deal with them and began to follow them. My brothers and sisters, I never, ever, ever, ever understood how a person can be Baptist and hardly ever come to the church and they can talk about how they love God and all this other stuff and then one of these brothers on the corner will start talking to them and they can become Isla, a Muslim and the funny part about it is that when you become one of them, you come in the church. You, when you become a Jehovah Witness, you're going to go out and talk to some people. You're going to go to class. You're going to go with their taking away. You're going to do what they tell you to do. And people who will not follow freely God will go over there and, and, and become a saint. I never understood how you can have the freedom to serve God when you want. But you can be made to do it. And you'll do it gladly. Even uh, the elect, it says, will be fooled. And, and, and you have followed. So they come in one package. Come on. Uh, the preachers, they say, these teachers, these prophets come in wanting uh, packages of high salaries, 401ks, big houses, and retirement plans. They are living well and lavish lifestyles on the, on, on the backs of Sister Mary's Social Security ties. Uh, they, they, they're living well, you know, with houses uh, and doing all this other stuff in the dark while people who can barely make it and are serving God rightly are giving up what they have for them to have Rolexes and high-minded cars and stuff like that. They want jets and airplanes uh, and they'll come in, uh, my brothers and sisters, and, and, and put you on a plan of prosperity ministry or put you on a plan of naming and claiming and we'll fall for that jump. Why do people have to go to Atlanta women to be free? You can get free right here in Cincinnati. Why do they have to go all over the country to these conferences just to get hear God or see God like there's no God in Cincinnati? I've never been able to understand going to Atlanta so that you can get free and you pass by all of these churches on your way to Atlanta and nobody else can free you but those people down there doing that conference. It's never been a thing of mine, but I've always wondered why is it that we can't find God in the places that we worship? Well, it's because we have people who, who, who have fooled us to try to get our money. It's in the text. To try to get us to put up money. And to try to, that they have them on the radio all the time. I had one, uh, I was on my way to uh, Memphis, I think, and all the way down there from Louisville 
all the way into Memphis, uh, the person kept trying to sell China dogs. Uh, Reverend Ike became a millionaire, selling bread cloths. Uh, they sell shoes, they sell oil, they sell holy water. Why to get your money, amen, and we fall for this junk. The one because we don't know the word of God. And they take one scripture and they twist it enough to get us to send our money. Listen, if somebody send me a hundred dollars and I give you a blessing, I said, I, 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 no, 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 I'm gonna keep this hundred dollars and, and I'm gonna bless myself. This is my blessing right here. If I give you a hundred dollars, then, then I'm giving away my own blessing. But they'll take one word. People go in the car lot, laying their hands on cars, on this naming and claiming crap. Going up naming houses and you know, naming husbands and men and women uh, on this naming and claiming idea. But listen, if you seek God, amen, and all of his righteousness, the Bible says, seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all the things that you talk about can be added unto you. I wish I had somebody else in here, amen. But God, amen, has doomed those uh, for the judgment that, uh, that, that they are doing and for the stuff that they are doing. But I want to uh, deal just a few minutes with this ninth verse, and I promise you I'll sit down, that's two. But for those who truly live for God and are called according to his purpose, he knows how to write the shit. He knows how to get you over. He knows how to bring you out. He knows how to bring everything all right. But, but for those who truly live for God, there's a, there's, there, there's a thing right there, that's the activation. Uh, for the promise of God is that if you're living for God and you're called uh, to his purpose, he knows, amen, how to bring things out all right. My brothers and sisters, there are three ways that God delivers. First way that God delivers is, is he delivers us from um, our situations. Luke 17, 12 through 19, uh, there were 10 men who had left and, and that Jesus was on his way by and they called him and said, look here, master, uh, we've got a situation uh, and we need for you uh, to come. We heard about what you've done in the past. Well, we heard well, about what you can do. And so Jesus said, look here, I don't even have to touch uh, them. I don't have to mumble and jumbo. I don't have to do anything for them because he said it before. If you've got the faith, the size of a mustard seed, you can tell Amen. Took 
yourself out of the second thing he does is he delivers you through your situation. He delivers you through your storm. He delivers you through your heartache. Amen. Uh, uh, Mark 4, 35 and 41 says that day when evening came, he said to his disciples and he said, let's go over to the other side. Even the crowd behind they took him along and he was in the boat. The Bible says that Jesus decides to go down in the boat and go to sleep. And it said that when he went to sleep, the wind started acting up and the waves got crazy and the sea became rough and water began to get in the boat. Amen. I told you he'll bring you through some stuff. And in the midst of a storm, they began to wonder what is it that's going on here. Jesus is sleeping. We're about to die. And so they go down and they wake him up to bring him up, to bring him over and through their situation. Have I got a witness here? The Bible says that after the wind and stuff got crazy, it said Jesus uh, got up and he began to rebuke the wind and the wave. Amen. He didn't take them out of the sea. He just calmed things down in the midst of it. See, that's what happened. In Shaq, like me, Shaq, in the many those days, my brothers and sisters, I need to remind you, amen, that when you get in to a situation, don't always expect God, amen, to take you out of your situation every now and then you need to stay, amen, in the storm, amen, and let God give you peace in the midst of the storm. Every now and then you need to stay, amen, in your situation, amen, not for you, but so that God can show people, amen, around you, amen, that the things that are going on with you are just temporal, but God is able to deliver you out of all of them. That's what, and I'm going to my seat, it's God will bring you out of some stuff. Out of the situation. Out of your trouble. Moses, in the book of Exodus, can testify that God will bring you out of your situation. When Pharaoh got so much going on down there in Egypt, God sent Moses down and told Moses to tell Pharaoh to let my people go. And then all the plagues that happened in that situation, but the end result was is that Pharaoh eventually let the people of God go. Why? Because God sometimes, amen, will take you out of your situation and get you out of your situation sometimes require a little bit more than what you think it does. Joseph told, amen, those that were in Egypt that God would visit them in 400 years. And the Bible says that in Moses' 80th day, and, and, and at the year 399, God began to trouble the waters in Egypt, amen, so much so, amen, that, that Pharaoh finally let the people go. But my brothers and sisters, he came back, amen, to his own vomit. He came back, amen, to his own mud and began to pursue them one more time. And the Bible says that he left the army of Pharaoh in the middle of the sea. Have I got a witness here? Well, I got to close this thing and I'm closing it with the idea that God will bring you out of some stuff. I don't know about you and I don't know who I'm talking to this morning, but God, amen, can bring you out of some stuff. How about that with this here? God can pull you out of the stuff that you get in in your life. Let me leave the Bible and talk about my own life. I've been in some situations. Uh, I've been in some trouble. I've been in some sickness. I've been in the storm. Amen. And God had to come in and rescue me out of my trouble. My troubles, amen, had gotten so high. My troubles had gotten so low. Amen. God couldn't come in, amen, and stir my troubles. He could not, amen, come in, amen, and bring me through my troubles. He couldn't come in and pull me out, uh, through some stuff. But God had to pull me out of my troubles. When they told me, amen, that you're in trouble and you're about to lose your license, God stepped in and pulled me out of my troubles. When the doctor said that he could do nothing else for me, and he said, you know how to pray, you need to pray to your God. He said, because I've done all that I Talk to God. 
situation and 